We're excited to um, today use a portion of this morning to look at run meet and really dive into that. Every one of your uh, event manager accounts on athletic.net already has a test meet on there. So as Janelle and Alan give you the demonstration on that, then you're going to be able to do that exact same meet and play with that on your own afterwards as well. Um, but first of all, I have a question to ask. On Timer's Talk last night, someone um, saw this and asked this question. And if anybody can raise their hand and answer how you get those gray window title bars off of your athletic scoreboard, there's just half. <laughs> you saw my response. Yeah. It's like F11 or you just like window and then you get F11 toggle. So there is a certain setting mm -hmm. within athletic SB when you're setting up a board, you have to toggle something. Variable size. Variable size. So yeah, right there, you uncheck variable size and then you keep always on top and you're set to go. So here is. Oh, Who said that? That was there. There we go. <laughs> I like that. And uh, one, one more hat over here for uh, another question with a few more slides down. So you have to look at a few of the slides. There's going to be a little detail on some early, early, early renditions of uh, TF Meet Manager. Uh, actually, it wasn't Run Meet at the time. So that hat is available for that question. Hey, Dan, um, I saw the picture of that little person on the, on the actual board. Yeah. How did you split? How did you get the stuff on the, on the side? Good question. So on um, Athletic SB, you can activate, you can create a board, and then this is zero, 0 on your screen, and you can create another board. You can click that clone and create another one, and then so where you're putting in the dimensions of your board, like 288 by 144, right below that, it might actually be right here. So at the bottom of this image, it says X0, Y0. That's your X and Y axis. Uh, use a little of my former math uh, teaching stuff. And you just put in like 500 if you want to bump it over. So zero zeros on the top left of your screen. And if you want the next board to start over 500 pixels, 500, zero. And if you want it to be, let's go back here, below, then you bump it over 500 and you drop it down 200 or whatever the resolution is of your board. And for that third field event board, it's over 500, down 600. And so you can activate as many as you want. You can create your layouts in whatever style. You can have the live results happening. You can have a compiled standing on the right-hand side. Um, really unlimited possibilities with that. This is 2021, and there's a lot of additional customization that Ben has added to that since then. Um, as you guys saw, just, this is just like with the basic layouts as the core of when he launched it. So. And that particular meet was an extension of, us, of my screen, but it wasn't plugging in Ethernet to to a board or anything. It was just the extension of the screen. Yep. So we're using a, a device called AirPair to mirror this laptop to that screen. And so Alan had a basically a laptop sitting right next to him. And they had a computer up there. And he just mirrored it up to their board. And there's a lot of different ways you can transmit this. You could have a computer sitting up there. Or you can um, do nano stations wirelessly if you need to be on your network. So. Um, Pretty cool on that. And so, yeah, I saw that question last night. I was like, oh, this is like <laughs> perfect. So I just posted back an answer on Timer's Talk. And that's just something that over the years, um, as things have come up there on there with questions about Run Me or other stuff, always really appreciated when it's not even just us, but other timers in the community have jumped on and like answered those questions. It's a really good um, feel and vibe when you guys are using the equipment, loving it so much, and then able to support everyone else as well. Um, so why create a new meat management system? And to answer that question, and give a little bit of the history of Athletic on that, just a really brief rundown. Um, but that, that question right there is kind of just the continued trend of adding new tech and developing new things for the sport. But um, our help desk, our uh, emails, we get this question all the time of mainly maybe from the middle school coach level, but also from the high school coaches. The email in the morning, they're also, they're also a teacher. Their entry deadline closed last night, and their email is one line. It says, my entry deadline is closed. How do I print off my heat sheets? And that's a question we've had since like 2010, 2015, 2018. And like, this is the morning of their meet. And they're like, where's my heat sheets button? And we're like, there's no heat sheets button. <laughs> you just did online registration. These are your entries. And you feel kind of bad because like their meet's today, and they need to go get high tech, and they need to try to contact them, and, um, or a meet pro or something like that. <laughs> so like, kind of like, good luck. But um, <laughs> you have your entries. Um, so that's just been one of those things that now we, we can answer that question. Like, entry deadline is done, 
click this button and your whole meet sees it for you. So athletic.net started uh, back in 2002. David was, he graduated from college and came back to the school where I was at. I believe there's eight of us in our family, so uh, a lot of, a lot of um, kids. And he was our coach. He was a teacher at the school, and he was to host the district uh, track meet that year and collect entries via fax. And he was a software engineer uh, degree, and he said, no, we're not going to collect entries via fax. So he just created something for seven teams in that league. Um, they collected all the entries, and within that first year, um, so that was a district meet at the end of the year. So within the first year after that, essentially Oregon schools heard about it. He opened it up to them to use, and within two or three years, it was kind of like this on the West Coast, like Washington, California, Idaho. Alaska and just like, hey, we want this. How can we do this? And so he needed to collect a bunch of school names and get them in the system. And lucky for him, being one of the older and the, we, were, we were called the four younger boys, he had four minions that he could put to work and ingest information into the database. So here we are, like grabbing team names and aligning them in you know class three, class four, um, and doing all that. And so now I. I always want, you know, my parents are like, there's so many of us kids, we're like, they're a little workforce. And then David comes back from college and he's like, now they're my little workforce. Um, so it's just been a, a fun thing from then, you know, uh, continuing to, to build the system. It's grown a lot. There's, a, you can see uh, a lot of events use it for registration um, on the track side and the cross country side. And really for the first many years, it was building things and implementing tech to solve immediate needs. People have requests, a coach is like, I wanted to do this. It needs to do this for my team records, for, for collecting registration and we've kind of hit that point recently where we've crested like where we are trying to solve and fix immediate needs and now we're launching into the future of like these are the things that should be done and that can be done with technology you see technology being used in so many other areas and the world of business stuff so how can we apply that to the sport and that's the kind of exciting launch ramp that we are on and going forward right now um, so here is a sneak peek of, I won't call it run meet because we, David, ever since he had, I think he had an iPhone since what, like 2012, 10, 11, who knows? I, the iPhone 4 might have been your first one. My, my, my first iPod actually would have been when I was dreaming. Like if I could only get Wi-Fi out of me, I could, I could run a meet from this iPod. So <laughs> 2000, 2009 then, I mean 2010, this is one of those things you'd be at a meet and be like, I should be doing this on a meet. And, um, our family, growing up, we camped a lot, and so, and then as we all got married, we would still camp, and um, we would go out, and you're going to start to see some pictures of, okay, what and how can you build a meat management system, and what needs to be in the meat management system, but our, our camping trips would oftentimes be like, okay, it's a break, we're not working, we're just like relaxing, but then the boys would go out on a run, and the, in -law, the brother in laws would go out on a run, and then all of a sudden, like, we just start talking work, we start talking out like Garnett, and our, the wives are like, can, like, can we get this camping trip? Like, is, can it be a business expense? Because you guys are just going to go there and like talk, talk about uh, athletic.net and athletic, um, anything you can do. So um, one of the things was like, uh, at that point, I'm a teacher and a coach and using other systems. It's so like, hey, put down some mock-ups. What do we need in the meat management system? What's out there? Well, how can we change it? Um, so thankfully, I am not on the UI design team. Um, that was what my younger brother did a lot of, a lot of that in the past. Um, but these were some whiteboards we had. Uh, I had in the middle school math classroom, and I was like, hey, I can just do some mock-ups. So, I mean, this is a um, screenshots of stuff from February 2014. That was my last year of teaching, and those whiteboards no longer exist, but I took a picture of them back then because I, like, I knew at some point this was just a dream. We really wanted to have an online meat management system that integrated with everything. Um, and on there, I have a really weird way of identifying gender, I guess. I just have this smiley face. So I don't know if anyone saw that throughout there. Smiley face with spiky hair. Spiky hair is okay. That is the question for the hat. How many times did I use a smiley face on these slides? <laughs> there were a few of them. There's another smiley face right there. Uh, any guesses? Five times. Five times. Five is close. Four. <laughs> there were four smiley faces on there. So, um, yes, I wanted to clarify what type of event it was. Um, so, um, last few slides there, and um, just want to prior to hand it over to Janelle. 
um, tell you who our RunMeet developer is. You guys have all met Ben and David as far as the athletic developer. Um, a lot of the crew and the team back in the early days, or David, my brother, another brother, uh, brother-in-law, the support guy that you emailed, David Johnson, he was a coach at the school that we grew up with. Um, RunMeet developer is a former teammate at the same school. He's right over here on the left, Michael Mervica. And he, we wanted him to come here, but I figured a throwback picture from the Wayback Machine, if you've ever gone online and wanted to see what a website looked like in 2006 or 2004, you go to Wayback Machine, you type in a URL. That is Michael Mervica. Uh, he went off to college, was in the Coast Guard, and then he came. That is Dan in the center. <laughs> and another teammate. Um, uh, went off to college, came back after being in the Coast Guard, and worked with us as a timer. And so he is an absolutely amazing uh, timer, very astute, like the most detailed, particular type of guy you'd want, which you want when you're doing something with run meet and development to make sure that it works, it doesn't break. If there's a bug, it's going to get fixed um, with a lot of attention. So uh, he comes out for two weeks every year and still times with us and is able to apply everything he does back into the um, development cycle. And so um, he's not here, but he will be here this spring and um, just do a, a lot of work together. And it's really fun to have him continue to be on the team. Um, so with that, we're going to do a demo of RunMe. Uh, I know that when Ben speaks about his things, he can answer a lot more in-depth questions. I'm a timer like you guys, so I'm an expert in using this um, and in integrating it with you know, an FAT system, Finish Links for Us, and Athletic.net. Uh, entries and live results, um, but we do have information on the rest of it. Just if you have development questions, those are not for me. Um, so run me from my perspective, like I'm, again, I'm a timer like all of you. I do not enjoy switching software at the beginning of a season, right? I'm good at what I do. I'm good at what I already use. I was not thrilled when Dan was like, we're using run me for every single standard event last spring. Because at a time, five meets a week, and you know, it seemed like a lot to learn. By the end of the second meet, I was sold. Um, so I, I'm hoping that uh, it works for a bunch of you as well as for that high school that only hand times one meet a year. Um, so yeah, the advantages of Run Meet, it's you're able to move away from High Tech or Meet Pro. Uh, you don't have to wait for responses to your uh, license requests. Uh, it's easier to customize seating for specific events and then just hit one button and it seeds everything. You don't have to go back and forth between your settings so much. You can auto seed, especially for invitationals and things, so that as coaches change entries, you can see what that meet's going to look like. Um, you have the ability to make more changes, changes on the fly without having to network all your computers together. Uh, so it enables trusted clerks and officials to make changes and have those changes be instantly reflected in your meet management program at your timing table. Uh, I also think it's a much more user-friendly interface. There's no weird Marlin instead of a mouse. Uh, and it integrates, I think, a lot easier with the uh, live results and FAT systems. All right, so I don't have a lot of pretty slides. We're really just going to demo how easy it is. This is a meet that is exactly like your test meets. Uh, it just happens to be mine. Uh, so you have looked at your ANET entries. You've gotten your events in order. Uh, you can do this the same way that you're setting up any meet on ANET. You can use the templates to get everything in order for you. Just make sure that they're where you want them to be. And then now you're ready to activate Run Meet, which is as easy as clicking this button. You click Start Now. And it quickly takes you through. Wow. We're going to wait for our internet real fast. There we go. It's got to pull in the entries and the athletes. And then it takes you through your settings. Uh, so you can choose how many lanes your facility has in both the straightaway and the oval. You can say if you want your seed times to count uh, in terms of your heat assignment, what your heat order is, what your timing method is. Uh, I'll briefly touch on auto import. So once you have everything set up, you can have it auto import your lift files with results from your FAT system. Uh, I don't tend to use that because I am a control freak. Um, and I like to be able to make manual changes if that's faster and not have reopening the event override anything for me. But it's really useful for a lot of easy, easy events. It just really reduces your workflow. Um, you also have the ability, if we click on lane preferences, to set specific preferences for lanes. Um, and later, there's an ability to set some templates for that. So like, say you've got an SOP that says like the inside alternating lane uh, changes per event for which school gets that preference, you have the ability to actually set a bunch of those um, and save some of those. All right, so we're going with the standard. 
You have the same options for field settings. I, you know, is it worst to best? Is it alphabetical? How big do you want your heats? You can also change all of these settings per event um, as well. So like say the JV boys long jump has 75 kids to get through. They're going to seed it alphabetical and run it open pit. It's really easy to change that. We'll show you how to change that on an individual event later. All right, so we're going with the standard today. Uh, you can change, go ahead, you can change scoring. Uh, if you need to set up different divisions to score differently, that's fine. Invites are fine. Dual scoring is exceptionally great because even if it's a double or a triple or a quadruple dual, it'll automatically do that for you, which I love because um, that was always a pain to try and post those after the fact. All right. Next up, we have competitor numbers. Always assign them because if you're using live results, you know you need competitor numbers. Um, so I always assign them even if there are no bibs involved in any of these meets. Then you have this option of, will you be using Athletic Live? Yes, you will. And it tells you, yeah, you really need to make sure to assign competitor numbers. Uh, if you are handing out bibs, you can sort what order those bibs are assigned in. Uh, you know, is it team and then gender and then last name, like a lot of us do? Or do you want it to just be team and then last name? You can click and drag any of that order um, so that you are assigning the bibs in the manner you're going to do up packets but we're not assigning bibs. I don't really care what order they assign the athletes in. Let's go. Seating, auto reseeding. Again, this is as they change entries, it automatically reseeds things. Um, I love it before meet just because may as well have a, have a look two days before at how many heats of the JV 200s there will be um, and how long I'm gonna be there, but I tend to turn it off as soon as you know, registration closes. Um, and for some events, I don't even, I don't even bother. But it is there so that you don't have to manually reseed everything every time a coach makes a change. Uh, and every time you get an email saying, I made this change, can you please put my kids in the right lanes with their seed times? It does it for you. Uh, you can also pick breakpoints for both track and field events now in RunMeet. And then that team position assignment is where you can load special preferences. Um, you can add multiple configurations there. So like if JV and Varsity have different seeding rules and different preferential rules, it can save those and automatically apply those for you. All right, and now it's seeding your meat. We, we wait for our internet just a moment. But yeah, that's it. Like you've told it what you want. It has seeded your basic meat. If you hit refresh, it'll. Like I said, someday Comcast is going to actually get us fiber in this building. But there we have it. All of your, if you click on any of the, these events, you can see how many heats, how many athletes are in them. You can see where they're at. Uh, you can drag and drop and change where any of those people are. You can add an athlete or a team by clicking that plus symbol. You can add a heat by clicking a plus symbol. You start typing any team name, any first or last name of an athlete on any roster, and it pulls up your applicable options and adds it. Uh, the adjust button to the right of this event lets you change how many lanes you're using. Like suddenly you want to have a 1500 with 20 people and you only set it for 12. It's really easy to suddenly add positions. Or if you're combining like a 3000 and you're running them together, you can also start the seeding lower down. So instead of dragging each individual athlete, it moves them all at once. And you can decide whether you're swapping athletes by lanes or sorting them. So you're inserting one in the middle and it'll move everybody to the outside. Uh, you can change uh, your settings for any of these events, yep, with those three dots. Um, you can choose the settings for these particular events rather than global settings for your whole meet. So like the 1500, they've decided they want to do alleys, or they want to do lanes, or they want this one to run slow to fast instead of fast to slow. You can change that for your individual meets. Yep. Or change that for your individual events. And when you save and close those, it automatically reseeds that event for you. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Um, so you're basically, during the meet, you're going to live on these screens. This is your seating screen. Once the meet starts, you're going to, if we go to the top of these, 
you can see that you have seating and results, track and field. So it basically just splits it into sessions for you so it's easier for you to be on the screen that you need and not have to sort through events you're not really looking at at the time or have an assistant at another computer managing the field entry um, and you don't have to worry about them getting into your running events. Uh, all right, so that's the basic seating of a meet. You're ready to go. If you hit the printer button, you can print all of your field sheets and your meet programs so that you're ready when you arrive. They look a lot like the high-tech programs, oddly enough. Um, and they, that's what will work for that high, school, that high school coach who says that morning, I need my heat sheets, what do I do? Here you go. It took him five minutes to walk through all those settings and a, you know, a couple more minutes to print all those reports. So that's your basic seating. Uh, with RunMeet, again, you can also use multiple devices from the cloud. So if Alan goes to that girls 1500, I'm in the same meet. I'll probably have to hit refresh. There we go. Now RunMeet's active. And it's syncing them. So if he goes to that girls 1500, and we decide we actually do want somebody in lane one, my tablet is very slow. There we go. You can start typing on any, like your clerk has an iPad or a phone or what have you and needs to add somebody. I'm just going to start typing to add. Let's see if there's anybody with that name. There we go. In a moment, he should have S-Jaw show up in lane one. So I added it. It's been pushed here. With Run Meet Local, it automatically gets pushed to your start list and updates your EBT files. Um, so that you don't have to network together and you don't have to get that like text from your clerk with a blurry like they've written who's really in lane one and you don't know who it is and you've got to take time out to try and type them into your system. Here it's already there. Uh, it works especially well for me. Again, those 200s at high school meets, I get really tired of them running three kids in every heat, all these empty lanes by that point in the meet. So I just hand my assistant my phone and tell them to go to that start line and make it better. Like, put kids in empty lanes, tell them where they are, and by the time they get to the finish line, I have them already. Like, their results are going straight to their name. So that's the part that I really love. And field events it also works like this as well. You could have field officials adding kids in the same way. It works both the same way for track and field, um, which is pretty handy. Uh, RunMeet also hooks up directly to ALive for results. So up here on the right, you see this ALive button. If you go ahead and click that, it'll walk you through creating your athletic life meet. Much of the form will be filled out for you. Once Alan clicks that button, it takes the settings that it already, it already knows you're using RunMeet. It already knows what the meet name is and where it's at and what day it's at because that's all on the ANET. If you're using ANET entries, it's all in there already. You just need to make sure that you've filled in what credit you're using, what meet credit for live results you're using, and then what your FAT system is. It's already made your meet management system run meet because you've clicked it from the run meet screen. And so it's just a couple of drop downs instead of having to fill all of that in for yourself. And then it creates your live meet site for you. Yep. And automatically populates it with the events and athletes and heat sheets from run meet. Uh, so it's a little, a little quicker. Once connected, anything you change in run meet will automatically be reflected on your live results site. All right, then it's time to connect to your FAT timing system because um, we're all using those for track and field. You need to make sure that you've uh, downloaded a copy of Run Meet Local, which is on your thumb drives. It works the same as like Athletic Live Local or SB. It's a similar style program. Um, you need to make sure that you're logged in with your athletic.net account. It'll ask you for your, your email and your password so that you get a copy of the meets that you have access to. Uh, then you pick which meet you're doing from the drop-down list, which for us today is... The symposium one, I think, will work for you for that. Yep. Oh, hey. Why isn't it there? Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, oh. We've set the dates as April 15th. It is not the day before April 15th. You have to make sure your upload protocols are on. I already set up one of them. But now he's got the one that we've just created is in there. You can also tell it where to put your start lists and where to look for your results. We always use a map drive just because it's easier for us to remap that uh, to each meets links folder instead of setting each set of software to where we're looking. We just standardly use a mapped drive. All right, that, 
So once you hit start, it automatically generates your event file, your people file, your schedule file. Um, it'll integrate with uh, Eagle Eye and Flash as well. But we're using Finish Links because that's what we standardly use. There we go. So now we have our event files in the drive we told it to, to be in. Uh, and then you're ready to load your start lists and go. Um, I have loaded a uh, video file from a meet I timed a couple days ago at a very strange indoor track uh, into finish links for Alan to show you that then once you've timed your event, you've loaded your start lists on finish links or finish links today, once you time your event, it'll automatically show you that you have FAT results in RunMeet. So if Alan will open, no, yeah, that one. That's for the field in just a second. All right, so he needs to go to his results page where you can see that you can manually enter marks, which is great for overrides. And then he's going to open finish links and open a video. We're going to pretend that we just timed, timed a, uh, this is an indoor 400 meter that we're using. Uh, he's going to save it like he's tagged everybody, save it, creates that results file. And then when he goes back to run meet, you should notice it'll show up on the girls 200 because that's the same event number. You'll see that you have this little camera that sh says that you have uh, an FAT file ready to go and you can import it. If you have that auto import set, it'll automatically import it. So if Alan clicks import, you get results. Or you should. There we go. So the results import onto the right lanes. Uh, you'll notice that I DNS'd one kid in Finish Links, but I did not in the other. For Run Meet, just like for High Tech or Meet Pro, in order to mark a, an event complete, every athlete has to have an entry. So Alan would either need to type DNS or DNF or delete that athlete in order for once everything has results on this to be able to mark it complete. So you see that little gray clipboard with the check? It turns yellow when you have the ability to say mark complete, lets you review and mark that event official. So that at the end of your meet, everything's complete, everything's official. So he's uh, going to say that this, this next heat did not run. And it says mark complete. So that tells you I've got all my, my results. I'm ready to uh, review it if you need to. And then mark that event complete. Uh, when you set up your your FAT connection, you also need to make sure that your like FAT system will work with RunMeet. Um, we have instructions for that on our support docs and on the QR codes um, on your step-by-step. -step. Uh, for finish links, it's, it's just the database options tab. You're just telling it where to look. It's pretty easy, I promise. Uh, but now RunMeet can see all of, your, all of your results files automatically, and it's pretty easy. Um, this also works for field events. If you're using the athletic app, and you have somebody at Girls Triple Jump uh, operating it. As soon as I, I've entered five of the six for this and my field app. As soon as I say that this last girl fouled, it shows up the same way it shows up that you have a FAT lift ready. You get this little green one on a tablet that says import sync with athletic field. So it says that these are done. And when, as soon as Alan clicks that, Full results come in straight from the tablet. No data entry, or at least less data entry. I often check them because sometimes somebody's wrong. Um, but it works seamlessly and a lot easier, I think. You can also manually enter uh, field results, um, either by entering just the best mark in their marks or by clicking on field series. You can enter the entire series, and it'll tie break in JD for you. Um, let's see. Uh, you can also add, remove, reorder athletes from those screens, from uh, you know field series or from this results screen, which is really makes it easier for your volunteer who's doing your data entry or your assistant to make it reflect what's actually on the sheet of paper. So again, you can bib number, first name, last name. It searches through the rosters, makes it really easy to add. Um, Michael has also worked really hard at making sure that any of your shortcut keys work. So like in Meet Pro, I can type star and it'll do foul. So I can do all the data entry on a 10 key. Same goes for Run Meet. Uh, if you notice something that we don't have 
uh, along those lines, let us know. Uh, because it's, it's been really, really great that Michael's been so responsive to making it a lot easier from the timing end. Um, that's really about it. Like, RunMeet is, is pretty simple. Uh, we have a list of uh, things that you can try and step-by-step -step instructions on your QR codes for today's breakout. I suggest you definitely look at those because RunMeet does a lot more than what we've just showed you, but it's super easy. Um, I really like it. Uh, and I think that looking a little bit in greater depth will let you know that like, it is something that you could choose to use if you didn't want to use HiTech. We only use HiTech now for uh, college meets and a couple of age group, like JO kind of things. Um, Run Meet has been really a lot easier than I thought it would be to switch over to and to use. And it'll do almost everything you need. And we're working on making sure that it does everything. It'll do prelims and finals. It'll do breakpoints. It'll do all of that. Anybody have any quick questions before we? Yeah. yeah. Say uh, you got a coach that entered everything in English and you need to change the metric. Is there an easy way to do that, or is that something you'd have to do manually? It, as seed times for their seed marks? Oh, uh, for results. Um, well, I mean, we've set this up so that it's, it's in English. It's in the settings, the field settings, whether you're doing it in metric or English. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so it won't let you, yeah, enter. It's in the global settings um, when you started the meet. Uh, same for the field app. You've noticed that it, you can tell it whether to enter things in metric or English, yeah. and it won't let you do it the other way. It tells you that that's not a valid mark. Is, like, you give it to the pole vault guy on paper. Right. Back to you in English when everything else, all the other events are <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've all had that. The the officials that switch to a third of an inch and switch to metric halfway through or use Greek letters? Yeah. Well, some schools don't have... Like Switching it midstream, like if you do half of them in English, half of them in metric, I don't think our systems are like that. But if you got the clipboard, oh, they're all metric. You just got a settings, change to metric, type them in. And then change so it back to English it. before you type the next set in. Yeah. And so that's a global set. If you event, you'd want us to pick up to do English or metric. You could toggle it prior to result entry. Change it mid mid data entry. I, I can't remember what we said on that, but I don't think it like it wants it's not to happy. It warns you or it clears it or but but So but is this a global setting or is it in the fence? It's it's, a, it's in a global setting. Okay. So you change it globally. Type it type in into that one event. Back. Go back uh, to the global uh, settings uh, no, and change um, it. You could leave the global so how does you have global settings? And then if we go to fields Get out of setting. No, get out of the setting. Let's go to the per events. I didn't oh. see it, David, in the oh. per event override. And in that case, I added to that. Can we add it? Yeah. I think we need to add that. And I like the idea of entering the metric and then hit a button and convert it to English. I assume that's, I don't know, is yeah. that okay? Is that, are those, is it just, was measured in metric that you were As long as it, like rounded it correctly. It <laughs> yeah. yeah. As long as it always know, rounded I know, down. I notice the, the scoreboards do that. Yes. Within the system, it's fine. But like, yeah. this should be where that option is. I agree. Because it's always where there's every event does it right except for one person. <laughs> we all know that exact <laughs> official, right? Yeah. 75, <laughs> 75 <laughs> Thank you for pointing out that it wasn't on the event event settings. Because you're right, we've all had a couple meets a year that managed to do something like that. Well, a lot of schools just don't have they don't have metric standards. Right. Yeah. So some, some of their high jump bar will be English. Gotcha. Yeah. So right now you have to switch it back and forth. My guess is by the start of track season, uh, you can switch <laughs> it in the event itself. Sorry about giving you more work. Look back. <laughs> <the> back. <laughs> That way, Ben gets a handoff to somebody else. That's right. Yeah, this is okay. me. You know, that's, 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 that's Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Can you build a meet from scratch without entries? Like, let's say, like a, uh, an event where they don't actually have any entry system. They it's just, one of the tasks on the breakout group perfect. is to run an unseated meet. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's actually pretty easy to just you know create a bunch of empty heats build your EVT file, time a bunch of empty heats and have some clerk at the start line typing in who's actually there. It works a lot better with bib numbers than it does with names, uh, just because it's quicker. 
Uh, but yeah, running an unseated meet is one of the, the more in-depth tasks. Yeah. Uh, a couple questions. Are you able to add like people that aren't even in the system? Like let's say um, we're in a mile split state and we yep. have some coaches that don't want to switch over. Totally. Okay. Forgot, forgot <laughs> to add their, an athlete on the roster. Yep. Or upload or yep. Can't, can't figure it out. Um, yep. Absolutely. There's a little uh, person button oh, that, that gets that you to all the athletes. So is that a purely manual entry, or is that have to be uploaded in the roster to athletic? Uh, yeah, Michael said he fixed that. Yeah. Uh, no, this is a purely man manual entry. Because last year entry. it wasn't. Yeah. It, yeah. 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 Okay. And that's a, that's huge for us because we don't turn. Well, last away. year we didn't have prelims and finals or breakpoints yeah. either, but yeah. they're here now. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. just I, we haven't used. So it keep yet. telling us the things yeah. that we yeah. don't have yet. We, the goal is to make it so that you don't have to use high tech unless you want to. So the other question is, if, if I'm timing, let's say um, I have a college meet and they're using. Um, Direct Athletics. I don't want to use Meet Pro. Um, I'd rather use Run Me. I think it's a better software. But they sent all the data over. Hey, these are all the events and everything like that. Is there a way I can upload that uh, CSV file onto there? My understanding is we're working on the DA connection. We're better at the mile split connection so far. Okay. Is my understanding, but I'm not the developer. Are you asking like in general? Just, just like a beats on an net. Here's my thirty. Here's my twenty events. Or 30 yeah, events. and yeah. here's all the entries. Yeah. So you can take it right now. It's not. You won't see the button here, but um, it's in development. It's in, it's in beta, beta right now. So okay. It was used last year by timers. It's still being used right now. You can take an import file just like you would import it in high tech. You can import it into ANET and it'll add the rosters. If they're not created for all the teams, it'll create all the events. So you have a blank of meat even not, not even have built your database and it'll build your database for you. So if you have the hundred meters or if you have the fifty five dash, it's gonna look at that from your entry file and build it. So it's just it's not fully released for anybody to use it right now. Just, this is you're you're bringing stuff into an alive environment versus like in a high tech meat pro, you're taking an entry file and importing it into an island. Just its own little thing. Here, when you import stuff onto a roster and everything, you're impacting team rosters, rankings, um, everything that they do with their team records. So we're just kind of navigating through that stream of things too. Okay. And then I guess I just thought of this one right now. If so, uh, we're in talks with the uh, meet right now, but um, the state has a agreement that everybody's using high tech. Well, if I'm coming in, I want to use I don't want to use high tech. I want to use Meet Pro. Is there a way that we could? export the results and put it onto their high tech. Yeah. There's a results CSV export, but not a, um, a manner to export and then import into high tech. Okay. Um, so then I will jump to kind of showing you guys where your um, demo pages are and then all these questions I'm keep asking and we'll have, there's 10, 12 of us that will be down there. And um, like it's really one of those things where we know high tech's been developed and Meet has been developed for 10 years, high tech's 30, 30 plus years. This, like we said yesterday, you know, two, three years, it's it's going to keep going, and um, this is an idea generation factory, essentially with you guys all together, um, and so we don't expect it to have everything, but it, it's going to get there from the 90% to the 95%, and like I was telling the city people yesterday, it won't ever get 100%. There's certain things in high tech or other things that, you know, maybe they don't even exist in track and field in most realms, per se, so um, this is going to cover the most cases. Um, I can't connect this computer to Ellen to the airfare anymore. If you want to, We'll put up a, our team page. I'll we'll show you guys where your guest needs are. Like how you pick tax today. Uh, and then if you want to change the ID to seven, the ID is seven three two eight eight. We'll use uh, Ryan's example. Um, so on your event manager page, every one of you has one on the site. If um, so, just log into athlete.net. Do exactly what Alan did to get to your page. It'll be there in the sidebar. If you click on your season calendar, you are going to see. I'm going to switch to outdoor. It's in the outdoor. Good, good. Switch to the outdoor and then click on this drop down right here. And you're going to see test run meet. And that's the same meet that Janelle just ran through. So, see some really interesting names. <laughs> so, that we had people who definitely will never be on ANET, hopefully. And you're going to click it. You're going to click manage meet. And there you get to see the whole entries portal. You can you know, change entries, you can move around entries in the entries tab, but your run meet section is also right on there as well to be able to get started and um, get that connected up to me. You can connect it up to Athletic Live. You can kind of use this time to do everything that you did yesterday. You could 
Connected up to the Athletic Live, get a meet going. The camera's down there. They're all in switches. They're all booted up. If you want to like take you know half an hour to do this, half an hour to actually like how does this whole big picture work? Get the camera on, connect it to your Link's laptop, feed in results, turn on the the auto LIF where they're just pulling in. Um, the display boards are there. Hook up the display boards, put the stuff in RunMe, put the stuff on the display board. And this is kind of the this morning to kind of full package you. Go down there with the meat management system and see how it all works and put it together. So, and then if anybody wants tablets to read the the step by step instructions from the QR codes on a slightly bigger screen, we definitely have a lot of those too. And then, from now till noon, we'll do this and helping out. We'll have uh, lunch at noon and then back up here at one o'clock.